The Republic of Gabon, located in Central and West Africa, was a French colony in the past. Gabon has an area of about 270,000 square kilometers and a population of about 1.8 million people. Although this country is small, it is very rich in minerals, including oil, magnesium, iron, gold, uranium, etc. One of Gabon's important resources is uranium ore. In 1968, France discovered a uranium ore deposit in the Oklo area of the Republic of Gabon and began a coordinated mining operation. In artificial nuclear reactors, energy is generated when uranium atoms, or sometimes plutonium, undergo fission or split into parts, releasing nuclear energy. The result of this fission is the creation of fast neutrons. If slowed down by a moderator substance, usually water or graphite, these neutrons can cause other atoms to undergo fission. When carefully controlled, a critical, self-sustaining nuclear fission reaction can generate energy over a long period, until the nuclear fuel is depleted of fissionable atoms. The energy generated by nuclear fission is often used to heat water and create steam, which turns large turbines to produce electricity. In 1972, French scientists took uranium ore samples from the mine in Gabon to test its uranium content. Uranium is a naturally radioactive material composed of three different isotopes. The most common is uranium-238, accounting for 99.275% of natural uranium. The rarest is uranium-234, making up only 0.006%. And finally, uranium-235, which has a special appeal. Due to its nuclear properties, uranium-235 is most likely to undergo fission when bombarded by neutrons. The isotopic distribution of uranium is very uniform in the Earth's crust, so all uranium ore mined today contains about 0.7-0% uranium-235. To increase the efficiency of nuclear chain reactions, uranium-235 is artificially enriched to about 3% before being used as fuel in nuclear power plants, and it is also used to make nuclear bombs. With the current level of science, these things can only be done through synthetic processes operated by humans. However, the uranium samples taken from the Oklo mine in Gabon puzzled experts greatly. Specifically, when French scientists began to examine the uranium samples mined in Gabon, instead of finding about 0.7% uranium-235 in the ore as usual, those samples contained only 0.717% uranium-235. To many, this 0.003% difference seems insignificant. However, according to Scientific American, this is extremely strange because it indicates that a total of 0.45 kilograms of uranium-235 was missing from the Gabon mine. How could this happen? To find the answer, experts and scientists from around the world gathered in Gabon to investigate what was happening to the uranium from Oklo and what made it so different. After investigation, they concluded that the site where the uranium originated was an underground nuclear reactor with advanced technology beyond the current understanding of science. Many believe that this ancient nuclear reactor dates back about 2 billion years and operated for at least 500,000 years in the distant past. Researchers conducted various investigations at the uranium mine and the results were published at a conference of the International Atomic Energy Agency. The researchers discovered traces of fission products and fuel waste at various locations in the mine. Interestingly, today's nuclear reactors cannot compare to this nuclear reactor in terms of design and function. This is the first and only discovery so far of a naturally created nuclear reactor. After examination, they found 16 other reactors in the same area. Unfortunately, these 16 reactors were destroyed by mining. However, the question remains, how was this natural nuclear reactor created? Because current technology cannot replicate what the nuclear reactor in Gabon did 2 billion years ago, scientists lean towards the possibility that the surrounding area of the Oklo reactor created the perfect conditions for nuclear fission to occur naturally 2 billion years ago. They believe that two main factors contributed to this. One is the weathering of rocks in the area. This allowed the uranium in the ore to concentrate 
to the point where it could start a natural nuclear chain reaction. Although the original uranium ore was spread out in sediment layers in the area, this weathering process caused the lighter sediment layers to be washed away, leading to more uranium ore in one location. The second condition that allowed for a sustainable natural nuclear reaction was the natural groundwater flowing through the faults and cracks in the mine. Essentially, this created a cooling area, or moderator, against any heat generated by the nuclear reactions in the ore. This allowed the Oklo reactor to maintain a slow and steady nuclear fission reaction. According to Scientific American, without these two conditions, the uranium ore might never have decayed and would never have been discovered by scientists in 1972. Since their discovery, scientists have wondered why these reactors developed in Gabon two billion years ago and seemingly did not develop anywhere else or at any other time on Earth. Scientists are still working to understand the Gabon reactors, but over the past 50 years, they have tried to uncover some details about how these nuclear reactors operated and were preserved in the geological record. Studies suggest that the Oklo reactor's formation dates back about 2 billion years, a time when the increase in oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere allowed uranium to concentrate. It also enabled water flows to deposit uranium into local sandstone and mudstone, both of which are more porous and permeable by nature. Thanks to the activity of microorganisms from the world's earliest tiny organisms, these uranium deposits could concentrate from there. Eventually, tectonic activity at that time buried these sediments underground, into the Earth's crust. Starting billions of years ago, the nuclear fission process in the Oklo reactor continued for hundreds of thousands of years, all thanks to the groundwater coolant of the mine, and finally slowed down and stopped. According to scientists, the only remaining evidence of the natural reactor's activity is in the elements, specifically the traces of barium and the aforementioned uranium-235 isotopes discovered in the early 1970s. Although the nuclear reactor's activity stopped long ago, it still provides profound insights not only into the entire nuclear reaction, but also into finding better ways to handle nuclear waste. According to reports, this ancient nuclear reactor was several kilometers long and contained about 500 tons of uranium ore in six areas. But despite being a very large nuclear reactor, its thermal impact on the environment was limited to about 40 meters on both sides. During the uranium decay process in the Oklo reactor, a significant amount of radioactive plutonium and cesium was created. Both of these harmful compounds, which can be very dangerous to living organisms, eventually broke down into harmless barium. In examining the area around the nuclear fission reactor in Gabon, scientists found no harmful radioactive substances from plutonium or cesium leaking into the environment near the reactor. This means that the radioactive elements were safely managed. In 2018, scientists studying the Oklo reactor published peer-reviewed findings detailing how radioactive waste was managed at the Oklo reactor. The radioactive plutonium and cesium did not leak into the environment because they were coated with a layer of ruthenium, which shielded the radioactive particles from entering the area. Thanks to this, ruthenium stabilized the exposure to radioactivity. Another byproduct of nuclear fission is radioactive xenon gas. Currently, modern nuclear power plants often release it into the atmosphere. Studies have shown the miraculous process of retaining xenon gas in the Oklo reactor. After the water in the Oklo circuit erupted, the decrease in temperature caused aluminum phosphate to precipitate, helping to trap the escaping xenon gas and locking it within its own crystals. They also found that water was used to reduce the reaction, similar to how modern nuclear reactors cool down by using graphite cadmium rods to prevent the reactor from reaching a critical state and exploding. Today, for a uranium-235 nuclear reactor to operate stably, a neutron moderator is needed to catalyze the nuclear fission process. In general nuclear power plants, light water or heavy water is used as a moderator. Additionally, to ensure the stable operation of nuclear reactors and prevent nuclear explosions, these reactors use neutron poisons to control the rate of the nuclear chain reaction by absorbing excess free neutrons. So what about this ancient Oklo reactor? According to research by Russian scientist Professor Alex P. Meshik, the Oklo nuclear reactor cleverly used the geyser circuit model. 
Interestingly, the Oklo reactor operated intermittently, meaning it would be on for about half an hour and then off for 2.5 hours, repeating this cycle. It used the groundwater circuit as a neutron moderator, allowing the chain reaction to continue. If a natural water circuit was used, the heat generated by the nuclear reaction would heat up the groundwater and cause it to evaporate, eventually making the underground water boil and erupt. When there was no more neutron moderator water, the chain reaction would stop. After that, water slowly receded back into the reactor, the nuclear fission process would start again, and the reactor would resume operation. However, geyser circuits are very rare in nature because their formation conditions are extremely harsh. Besides the geothermal source, the ground must have a system of cracks leading down to the geothermal area, and there must be a special material, CO2, in the inner walls of the geyser circuit, making it sealed so that the pressure from the bottom can push all the water to the top without leaking out. Almost no geysers erupt regularly. Currently, only the Yellowstone Park geyser in the US erupts regularly, but it is still not stable. In 1939, the average eruption interval was 66.5 minutes. Now it has gradually increased to 90 minutes. If this continues, in a thousand years, we may no longer see the geyser eruption phenomenon. However, the Oklo geyser system operated stably for 500,000 years, erupting regularly, unchanged by external factors. This indicates that there was an intelligent control system to adjust the balance at any time. Otherwise, this could not have been achieved. For scientists, finding a way to safely manage radioactive waste that naturally occurred two billion years ago has become the focal point of research on the nuclear fission reactor in Gabon. This helps us find a viable way to manage today's nuclear waste to use nuclear energy safely and efficiently, at least until we can develop cleaner forms of energy. Perhaps natural nuclear reactors operated in other parts of the Earth two billion years ago Perhaps we have not found evidence of other natural nuclear reactors, or perhaps the radioactive remnants of other natural nuclear reactors have eroded or oxidized and dissolved long ago. The wonders of the two billion year old nuclear reactor in Gabon have raised the question of whether ancient civilizations with advanced technology created it, or if mother nature knows how to operate a nuclear reactor. What are your thoughts on this video today? Don't forget to help us reach 100 likes on this video. Goodbye and see you next time.